Welcome to Gethsemane Baptist Temple, the voice of Calvary. Located in Star, South Carolina, we are a lively, old-time, Bible-believing, camp-meeting-style church where the shout has not died out. Join us now as our pastor, Sam Duncan, brings this week's message.
bring a different type message today in light of what we've been doing uh, and seeing the students and uh, praying over them. But I want the older ones to know uh, that we're still in school. It's called the school of life. Would you turn with me this morning to the book of Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter 12, please. And when you find your place, as we do every week, would you stand uh, in honor and reverence of God's word? Proverbs are known as the wise sayings uh, of Solomon. It doesn't get any wiser than Solomon uh, unless it's God himself. Before I get into this message, uh, you know me, I've never shied down from a fight. I don't know how many of you saw the so-called opening ceremony of the Olympics. I didn't see it as it was going on, but I did see the clips later as how that they took the, uh, the picture that we all have of the Last Supper with Christ in the middle and the disciples and mocked it with a bunch of drag queens. Now, what purpose would somebody do that for? The only possible thing uh, is to mock God and mock Christians. Somebody give me an amen. We're living in a devilish world, and let me also, uh, while I'm saying things like that, to tell you the divide in America is not getting any better. Let me tell you, I want to talk for a minute. This, my message has nothing to do with this, but God wants me to say this. You know, in America, you've got leftist politicians that are uh, on Israel's case. You know, Hamas, that terrorist organization, back in October, they didn't hit military installations. They went into private homes, killed, raped, and robbed civilian people. Israel has retaliated and somebody needs to tell some of these politicians to stay out of Israel's business. But now, if you haven't heard the latest, they've been crying, stop the war, stop the war. Israel kind of slowed down. And just within the last couple of days, Hamas went to a soccer field. killed 12 children. 12. You saw the, the little ones that we had up here. Little kids playing soccer killed 12 of them. And now Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, says they're going to retaliate, and they will. And now Miss Harris and some of that bunch already decrying Israel. Somebody got a backbone, say amen. amen. And listen, if that had been one of your children or one of your grandchildren, you'd be going after them with a tire tool. Amen. Don't tell me that Israel does not have the right to defend itself. I know we're on television. Yeah, I said it. Amen. We're living in a bad world of evil people and people that at least acknowledge Christ. We've got to stick together and stand together and make an impact for Christ, which is the only possible hope for the future. I looked around a little bit ago, and I had one little granddaughter up here in kindergarten, and I got another grandson uh, be graduating this time. I saw others here that I watched them grow up. I don't know about you, but I'd like to see them be able to have a future. And unless something happens in a positive sense, 
they don't have a whole lot of opportunity ahead of them. Not trying to be a doomsday prophet. Just telling you the way it is. So among those of us that know the Lord, we got to stick together. Now we have just saw the kids. I want to talk to grandma and grandpa and daddy and mama now. And as well as the rest of us. And it gives us some powerful information. Austin, bump my monitor. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. The Bible says this. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Let me interpret this for you. He's saying the person that thinks they know everything, they're really a fool. And the Bible said a wise man will be the one that will seek counsel or seek advice. You know, you don't know it all. Somebody talk to me. Now, some of us are down the road of life a little more than others. And if you travel the road of life, you're going to pick up a little bit. And we need to share it back with the next generation. And that generation needs to hear the advice. Let's pray as we speak to you a little bit this morning. And I admit this is a little bit out of character for my style of preaching. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I'm as old-fashioned as cornbread and pinto beans. But I want to preach about knowledge and wisdom. I want to speak to you a little bit on the school of life. Let's pray, and after prayer, you may be seated. Our Father God, we bow today in the presence of Almighty God. Lord, we do thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl that has come this way on this day. I pray, Father, that you'd bless those young people in the back, these young people here in the auditorium with us, as well as parents and grandparents. Let us all realize we're living in an evil day. And Lord, let us I pray realize uh, that this Bible uh, has the answer for every problem uh, of life. Uh, I'm asking you, God, to speak to us today and let every one of us uh, be teachable. Uh, I pray, God, that not only as we send the kids to school and expect them uh, to be teachable, I pray that parents and grandparents, uh, that we also uh, would be teachable. Uh, have your will and way speak to every heart. We pray it uh, and we ask it, our Father, uh, in Jesus, uh, in Jesus' uh, mighty name uh, that we humbly pray. Uh, and all God's people ran the devil out of town uh, by shouting what? Yeah. Uh, practice one more time. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Uh, you know, folks, these young people gathered up here, some of them uh, mistakenly believe uh, that after they go to school uh, 12 years uh, and they walk across uh, a platform uh, and somebody will hand them a paper called uh, a diploma, they think that the learning process uh, is over. Let me tell you, uh, you're just now beginning uh, in the real school, uh, the school of life and then when they go on and go to a college and walk across the stage of some college or university and they get 
that degree. A lot of them think that the learning process is over. Let me tell you, you learn something every day in the course of life. I've been pastoring 45 years. And mister, I hope I know a little more now than I knew six months in. Somebody say something. Hey folks, during the course of life, for the when you look around the church and you see somebody been married 50 years, don't think they didn't learn some things along that 50 year journey. Y'all talk to me. Let me put it to you like this. Let's say that tomorrow, Travis, we're going to go to Atlanta and I get on the interstate about an hour before you do. And I call you back. I get on down below Commerce and I call you back and I say, hey, don't come this way. There's a wreck. There's a bridge out. There's construction. The traffic is stopped. I tell you, don't do that. Uh, then you would be an absolute moron to say, I got my own driver's license. I got my own car. Nobody's going to tell me how to drive. Now, would you or would you not be an idiot uh, if somebody caught, let you know somebody well let me tell you on the road of life uh, grandpa's on down the road uh, daddy's on down the road somebody say so and look folks it is our job to take our experience uh, and pass it to the next generation and young people it is up to you to accept some of that uh, information that you get and make your life count for God uh, and to make a productive member of society. Somebody make the devil mad right now. Amen uh, and amen. Even in the Bible, this is a Bible principle. Moses, how many of you? Well, I think everybody should know Moses. Moses was a great man. But as you know, Moses understood that you need to accept advice. Uh, and listen, uh, every one of us, we have not, I got news for you. None of us have arrived. None of us have made it. None of us are perfect during the course of life. You've learned a little more about being a dad, a little more about being a mother, a little more about being a grandparent, a little more about being a Christian, a little bit more on your job. And look, it is our job to realize uh, we've never figured it all out. We have not yet arrived. And the Bible said, if you're a wise person, you will listen to advice. Uh, you will listen to counsel. But that one that thinks they know everything. You ever met morons like that? I got news for you. You might be a computer geek. You might be a computer whiz. But you don't know beans about construction. Or you might be in the construction and know all of that, and you wouldn't know anything about computers. Somebody talk. Nobody is going to know it all. And the Bible acknowledges that. And on this day that we're thinking about school, uh, on the school of life, uh, we need to learn. Uh, hey, folks, we're still in school. We uh, Look around the building. Those of us that are gray-headed, we're still in school. We're in the school of life. Naturally, as a pastor, I want us to be better Christians six weeks from now, six months from now, six years from now, if time lasts, uh, to grow uh, in the grace uh, and the knowledge of the Lord. Several real quick points. And I know this is different. And again, I know I'm not a psychologist, but let me share this with you. Number one, great people have great advisors. Great people have great advisors. How many of you, I, I, I'm not a golfer. I, I might hack or knock around a little something with my grandboys. But let me tell you, I don't know a whole lot about But how many of you that are real golfers know the name Butch Harmon? I heard one person say, mm-hmm. He didn't say he did. He just said, mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you what I mean. 
Butch Harmon is Tiger Woods' coach. Everybody knows Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods could say, I'm the greatest there's ever been. I don't need anybody to coach me. I don't need anybody to tell me about my stance. and I don't need anybody to tell me about how I hit the ball and what I do. But listen, great people have great advisors. Uh, and look, uh, there's nothing weak uh, about seeking advice. Uh, we're all still trying to learn. And every president from George Washington Washington, all the way to this mess we got now. They have a cabinet of advisors. Boy, I, I rest my case right there. You listen to the wrong people. You'll be more confused than a termite in a yo-yo. Am I right? But let's pop up. I want you to see it from a biblical point of view. Pop up in the book of Genesis. Everybody listen. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. That's when some of you would have stomped your foot and you would have bristled out, said, Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Not Moses. He was a great man. Notice what his father or his father-in-law said, Thou wilt surely wear away both, th both thou and this people that is with thee, for the thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, which is advice, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes of unto God. Let's keep the verse going. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shalt walk the, show them the way wherein they must walk in the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. You want to know what made Moses go down in history as the greatest Jewish leader of all time? He was willing to listen to advice. He didn't stomp his foot and think he knew everything. He didn't think that he had arrived. And let me tell you, the fellow that's given him this information is, is his father-in-law named Jethro. Most of you smile when I said Jethro. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Bodine. But now look in verse 24, the latter part of the story. Pop up. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Here's Moses, the great man of God. He didn't, uh, he didn't think he had arrived. He didn't think that he had knew uh, everything. And his father-in-law said, Moses, you go wear yourself out. Break these Jewish uh, people down into companies and groups and have a ruler over this many and this many and this many. Let them report back to you. And Moses did it and became uh, the greatest Jewish leader of all time. You know why? He was teachable. Back before we started a Bible college, and we've been doing our Bible college 25 years already. Hard to believe. Prior to us having our own Bible college, a young man told me that God had called him into the ministry. I looked around. I said, Lord, have mercy. Where do I send him? And some places just way too liberal suit me. So I sent him to Greenville over to Tabernacle. Now that's a haul to go from nearly to Townville to Greenville. But they went for a while. I was in Greenville Hospital uh, visiting, ran into the fellow that was the president of the Bible College. And I said, how is old so-and-so doing? He said, he quit. I said, What? See, so yeah, he already knew everything. <laughs> you couldn't teach him anything because he was not teachable. Look at this way, folks. Never get to the point 
that you can't be teachable. You don't know why people get out of church and get away from God because they don't want to listen when somebody has tried to help them. And in, Maybe it came from a Sunday school class. Maybe it came from a pulpit. But once people become unteachable, uh, nothing's going to make them uh, grow and go forward for the Lord. Somebody give me an amen. This is different style preaching for me, but with school starting and our thoughts on that, look, we just as we send our children and grandchildren to school and expect them to be teachable? What about mom and daddy? How teachable are you? Grandparents, how teachable are you? If you get to the point, pardon me, but stomp that foot and uh, say, nobody's going to tell me what to do. You get like that, let me tell you. And listen to the ones that love you most. Uh, something I, teenagers, listen to me. Something I really don't understand. How that your dad can tell you something and it'll go in one ear and right out the other. And another person can tell you the same thing that your dad just told you and you'll listen to them. Learn to listen to the ones uh, that love you most. Somebody so, somebody say something. Am I right? Listen, when you love somebody, you're not going to tell them wrong. And even in the home, oh, if, if a husband says something to a wife, she thinks he's picking on her. And if she, uh, she says something to the husband, he thinks she's nagging. Why are y'all grinning now? I saw one husband go. He was afraid to turn his head. He just cut his eyes. Somebody give me a name. But wait a minute, am I right? Learn to listen to the ones that love you most. Uh, when somebody loves you, they're not going to try to ruin your life. And if they're telling, and here's the problem, a lot of people, they don't want advice or counsel. They just want somebody to agree with a the decision they've already made. Somebody talk to me. A lot of people want to do what they want to do, and they want to find somebody to agree with them. Hey, listen, when I speak up and say that the Bible said not to commit adultery, not to lie, not to cheat, not to steal, you can get mad all you want to get mad, but listen, the authority comes from God and not from Brother Sam. And people get all bent out of shape if you call their hand living immoral lives, living in an ungodly fashion, and thinking it's still all right in the presence of God. I said I wasn't going to preach, didn't I? We get in a mess because we won't listen when God has something for us. Oh, and listen, you got to make sure you're listening to the right people. Don't go to Elizabeth Taylor for marriage advice. You know, my little funny, I use, I go off and preach somewhere. I'll, tell, I'll say, well, well, I'll tell you like Elizabeth Taylor told her ninth husband, I won't keep you too long. And listen. You don't go to Charles Manson to get advice on anger management. He just killed them. Multiples. Do you see what I'm trying to say? You got to find, let me tell you young people something. Pick you out some old saint of God that's been serving the Lord for the long haul. Not somebody that's tiptoed around and played with God. Not somebody that's got one foot in the world and one foot in church. You find somebody that's meant business with God for the long haul and you get plugged into them and you follow after what they're doing. You'll come out all right. Young married couples find somebody that's been married 40 or 50 years uh, and pick their brain uh, and find out how they made it. The Bible said you're a fool if you don't. He said you're wise when you listen to advice. And all advice needs to go back to the Bible. I don't care who it is. 
If they tell you something that's not biblical, you flush it down the toilet. Let's see a few verses. I'll eventually get to six points. But they're real short for this morning. Pop up the next verse. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. You not make sure, first of all, you're finding somebody that understands what it is that you're facing. From a godly point of view, go, let's go on to the next verse. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. That book right there means more than any other document on the face of the earth. And listen, you don't necessarily, when you get ready to need some advice and get ready to have you an advisor, you don't necessarily go and get you an alphabet person. You say, Brother Sam, what do you mean an alphabet person? A CEO with a PhD. You find some old saint of God that's been living for the Lord. Somebody that's been in some valleys and didn't quit. Somebody's had some hard times uh, and stayed with the stuff. Somebody that knows what it's like to have a little adversity and keep on keeping on. I submit to you today, just like the song says, we really are on uh, the winning side. But we just get the wrong advice, make the wrong decision, and young people ruin their lives, and then grandparents ruin their lives, parents ruin their lives over bad decisions that were not prayed through. Let's see if we got something else up here. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. A lot of people think they can get by living an evil lifestyle. It's going to catch up with you. And that word phrase, fear of the Lord, the word fear there means respect the Lord. You're not wise until you respect the Lord and quit living an evil lifestyle. Those kind of things will take you down every single time. And I believe we might have one other set of verses. I know this is a different way than we normally do. Do we have one more in the computer? If we don't, that's all right. Evidently, we don't. <laughs> I had another one in mind I thought I'd put in there, but I was busy this morning. I want to give you six things. You said, Lord, have mercy. A minute or two on each. I promise. When you get advice, you got to determine. See, when you get saved, you got to determine what kind of Christian you're going to be. Are you going to be a serious Christian? Or are you just going to play along and barely get by? If you want to be successful in life, there's some things you got to do. Head coach from the football teams right, here, right now. You know, you don't win games by sitting around doing nothing all day long. You got to get out there and get some things done. That people that have had experience can pass these things along. And the same thing is true in the Christian life. Let me tell you a quick humorous story. I knew an old preacher one time, and he went by Doc so and so and that was all right no problem with that but you know he wasn't at camp meeting run around stomping slobbering slinging sweat three pews he was a great man and he told a bunch of us one time I got some advice for you Man, I'm thinking he's going to get in the book of Proverbs he's going to get into some deep things he said listen to me if you ever get downhearted he said, listen to some country music. <laughs> he said, because I guarantee you the people in that song will be a whole lot messed up than what you are. <laughs> their dog just got killed. Somebody wrecked their pickup truck, and their wife run off with their best friend. <laughs> you can find some advice. Let me get started 
all these things start with the letter R, so maybe, maybe, maybe you'll remember them. Number one, when you get advice, reserve. What do you mean reserve? Reserve your decision. Don't jump out and already have your mind made up. Reserve your decision after you have gotten what's been given to you and what God has given and you've checked it out with Scripture and some old saint of God has told you the right way to live your life. Reserve your decision. Don't jump out there and don't already have your mind made up. Number two, resist. After you reserve, resist the temptation to butt in. Amen. Ever seen some of these talk shows on TV, especially if it's political? One will be talking and the other one will jump in. Rah, 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 back and forth. And when it's over, you don't know any more about what was said than if you hadn't even watched the show. Let me tell you, resist the temptation to butt in. If somebody, let me tell you something. If your dad... Or I'll say this, your papa tries to tell you something and help you. Don't have your mind made up up front, I'm going to do this. And don't come back, but, 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 but. Resist the temptation. Listen it through. Now look, there was a day I was a young man. Then I was a middle-aged man, and I'm not so much middle anymore. <laughs> I've been on all sides of this, and I found out. Folks, let me tell you what. When you're young, you might think your daddy doesn't know much. Like a fellow said, he left home when he was 18. He came back when he's 25. He said, I'm amazed at how much my dad's learned in that period of time. <laughs> no, it was you. Somebody talk to me. Reserve your decision. Resist the temptation to butt in. Thirdly, remain. Remain calm. I might tell you something sometime. It might make you a little bit mad. But as long as I got scripture for it, don't get mad about it. I mean, I know I'm easygoing and soft-spoken. Mind my own business and I don't get out and ramble around in the church mud. I don't get in folks' face. Amen. But seriously, you got to remain calm because sometime or another, something might ring your bell. But if it's biblical, you know it's going to have to be right. Now, when it comes to church, our family, our sports, or whatever it is, that person is trying to tell you something to help you, you remain calm. You take that in. Somebody thinks enough of you to give you some advice. To help. Don't bristle up when somebody tries to tell you something. They're trying to help you. Somebody talk to me. Good gracious, we're talking about life. It is so tough. The world is so wicked. We need some Christians and people to be sold out to God and make their lives count. And the only way we can do it is older people pour into younger people and younger people accept it and apply it into their life. That's what it's going to take. And then we get to another R, review. When you remain calm and you resist the temptation of butt in, you reserve your decision, and then you take a little time to review it all. Compare it to Scripture. See what the Bible says. And if that dad or that grandfather or that grandmother, whomever it might be, if they're right, that coach, that teacher, you accept it because somebody loved you or cared enough about you. I'm going to tell you something. My daddy told me some things, and I figured it out a little bit later on. He was telling me for my own good. Might not have understood it when I was young, and I might not, and I knew better. Back in the day, you didn't argue back with your daddy. You wouldn't have any teeth left in your head. 
but you found out later on they were telling you what was right. And in your mind here that had not gone to the point to accept and understand it, you thought they were wrong. The Bible makes it clear. I'm going to read it one more time. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. And then the last thing, the R, is to receive it. Take it in. Mull it over. Go through. Let me tell you something that I heard years ago. I believe in the act of creation. I believe God gave us eyes for the reason of seeing, ears for the reason of hearing, a voice for the reason of speaking. I believe God is the author of creation. Well, let me tell you something. God gave you two ears and one mouth. I think we should listen twice more than we talk. And the act of, if we look at it logically, like that. Young people, they're going off to school. Thursday is the day. And you as parents and grandparents, you're going to expect them to not be a fool. You're going to expect them to go and to take the knowledge that that teacher has, been got, has acquired and pass it on to them, whether it be kindergarten, 12th grade, or college. And you're going to expect them to not be a fool and not think they're already right with everything. But now what about us back at home? How teachable are we? Well, we accept truth when it cuts against our grain. Talk to me. We're in a mess in America. We all have our ideas, but let me tell you the ultimate answer. It's the Lord. Like that song, all my hope is in Jesus. I want you to hear me, and I'm closing for today. If Jesus is our only hope, then this Bible is our only guide. And when it tells us, don't be a fool and think you know everything. Be teachable. Let the counsel come your way from wise people to make you wise. I'll be honest. When I was 18, I probably looked at life a lot differently than I did at 30. And then at 30, I looked at it differently than I did at 40. Then at 50. <laughs> then at 60. And then at that 7 -0. Can't bring myself to say it. You look at life different. But let me tell you something that has been true the entire way. Some political parties change. Political candidates change. That Bible right there never changes. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is not supposed to change. So if I could wind it up, and I know this is a whole different style of preaching, but I'm saying just be teachable. If your kids come home and They've got a note that says they've not been teachable. You'll get pretty upset with them. Before you get too upset with them, ask yourself, have you been very teachable from the Lord? You learn lessons all the way through life. The school of life. Some of us have called it the school of hard knocks. You learn through some bad things. But keep your faith, keep your trust, and keep your focus on God. We'll come out of this thing all right. I don't have a clue what day the trumpet's going to sound. But I know one thing, the Lord's coming back. 
whether it be today, tomorrow, next week, next month, or next year, I know that all our hope is in Jesus. And when he comes, I don't want to face him unashamed. Learn as much as you can about the Lord. The Bible says grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. That's my thought for today. Totally out of character for me. Not being as harsh and hard and rougher. But I'm going to tell you what. This is biblical. You folks, y'all amaze me all the time. I preach real hard. Y'all amen me to death and wave hankies. I preach nice and... Oh, look at me like something's wrong. Be teachable. Let's pray. Our Father God, we bow in your presence. I'm asking you, Lord, to give us some help. We're living in a bad world, and we know that we've got the answer through Scripture. And Lord, let us be teachable. Grandparents, parents, children, teenagers, let us all, God, learn the lessons from the school of life. Take it and use it. God, there's people here that have learned some harsh lessons because of booze. There's people who've learned some hard lessons because of drugs. There's some people who've learned some hard lessons maybe because of some immorality. And, Lord, let the next generation glean knowledge without having to go through it to be teachable from a prior generation. Have your will and way. We commit it now in Jesus' name. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears I claim for my own. Then like the blind man, the God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander and stray, for straight is a gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Amen. Thank y'all. In Christ alone, my hope is found.
Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, the light of the world by darkness slain. Can ever pluck me from his hand 
We hope you have enjoyed this week's broadcast of Gethsemane Baptist Temple, the voice of Calvary. We invite you to join us here each week. Or better yet, join us on Sunday at 6116 Highway 81 South in Star, South Carolina. For more information, visit us online at www.gbtemple.com. We look forward to seeing you in church Sunday.